Hello everyone. Yeah, today I will show you what are the other research work we have done. We are supposed to present it in ICM HS. Anyway, our work which we, we want to present is the detection of virulence factors and beta lactamase encoding genes among the clinical isolates of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Researchers and I am this this is the me, Nasbol MHM. So I am from Pardana University, Center of Research Excellence, Graduate School of Medicine, Pardana University, is in Sardang, Malaysia. Today, okay, we'll go through details about this paper. Okay, the introduction, basically, it is about detection of virulence factors and beta lactamase encoding genes among the clinical isolates of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Okay, so introduction. Infectious diseases caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa are problematic to treat due to the resistance development and produce multiple virulence factors. So basically, we know that Pseudomonas aeruginosa got many virulence factors that can help them to be multi drug resistant. Okay. In the hospital commonly caused nosocomial infection, particularly in immunocompressed burns and cystic fibrosis patients are due to Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Okay. The high percentage of mortality and its multi drug resistance mechanism has driven Pseudomonas aeruginosa as an emerging superbug. Okay. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is widely distributed and able to secrete multiple virulence factors such as hemolysin, gelatinase, DNAs, and it also it can produce biofilm. These factors are damaging their host immune systems and form a barrier to antibiotics that reduce antibiotic efficiency, resulting in treatments to be incompetent and failure. The prevalence of ESBL, MBL, and AMP producing pseudomonas aeruginosa are distinguishing virulence factors which may have effects on prolonging treatment and effective control. The principle of this work was to assess the significant association among the valence factors and beta lactamase mechanisms and their antimicrobial resistance of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Okay. Materials and methods. For this study, we have taken 120 Pseudomonas aeruginosa from both pediatrics and adult patients. Uh, we have got the sample from six various types of clinical samples like blood, wounds, respiratory secretion, stools, urine, and sputum. We have and we have collected all the samples from uh, Kuala Lumpur, the uh, hospital named Salayan Hospital. Okay, a routine antimicrobial susceptibility test was performed for Pseudomonas aeruginosa, all the 120 samples, by Kirby Bird distribution standard method. This Kirby Bird distribution method is antibody susceptibility profile testing. A standard method used everywhere. Okay, for the detection of hemolysin in vitreal isolates, colonies were plated on plates for 24 hours at 37 degrees centigrade. After incubation, total lysis of the RBC formed surrounding the culture colony were indicated as positivity for hemolysin. This is also a standard method used everywhere. The neutron agar media for detection of phospholipase was inoculated with the bacterial colony for overnight incubation at 37 degrees centigrade culture. Formation of bacterial colony from white to brown color considered as positive result. Okay. The gelatinous production was studied onto neutron agar gelatin agar medium containing 1% concentrated bacterial culture. The cultured plates kept for incubation at 37 degree for up to 7 days. Formation of precipitation zone surrounding the spot indicated positivity for proteases. DNS test agar plates were used in this test to grow the bacterial colonies for 24 to 80 48 hours. HCL per one normal solution was added to the spotted cultures and a clear zone formation around the culture indicated as positivity for DNA's reaction. Tube method is commonly used for biofilm detection. In our study, five bacterial colonies were inoculated to 5 ml of BHA broth in glass tubes and kept for incubation at 37 degree for nearly one day. The cultures were suctioned after incubation and saffronine mixed to stains of the test tubes. The visible film growth on the wall of the tube indicated as positivity for biofilm. Double disc synergy test was used to detect ESBLs and MBLs. Disc antagonism test was used to detect inducible MC beta lactamase among the isolates of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. These are the result section. You can see the results. We have taken the age group. This is the age group of the patients, and this is the gender, male and female. We divided into male and female category and source of clinical isolates, like the, as we said before, stools, wounds, respiratory session, urine, sputum, and blood. Okay, these are the samples here. Okay. 
so you can see the frequency of the isolates okay and this is kirby body's division method you can see the clear zone of inhibition okay so you can see all the disk okay and this is the result we see after the antibiotic susceptibility testing you can see this from here analysis of antibiotic susceptibility test okay and we saw this this table you can see multi tag resistance uh, the number of antibiotics is here and types of antibiotics these are the antibiotics used and number of multi tag resistance isolates so you can see more than three classes of antibiotics these are the one and 12 percent of the isolate shows multi tag resistance so as it is go on like this and you can see the results okay and here also same virulence vector production from different clinical isolates you can see the virulence vectors or hemolysis info solipia gelatinous dna biofilm so these are the production of this all these valence factors you can see and this one is a ESBL, MBL, ampicillin production and multi resistance among the isolates stools, wound, respiratory urines, put and blood all this okay you can see the e-test detection of ESBL and MBL test we're using e-test here and can be a double disk synergy test here so this is analysis of association between valence factor and beta lactamase producer. So you see all the tests, uh, ESBL, MBL, ampicillin, and here this side is hemolysis, phospholipid, gelatinous, DNS, biofilm, all these are valence factors, and the association with ESBL, MBL, and ampicillin production. You can see that table. Okay. So in the discussion, you can see the pathogenicity of Pseudomonas aeruginosa is attributable to the production of multiple valence factors. Infection caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa is difficult to eliminate because of its poor efficacy of antibiotics and numerous resistance mechanisms by the bacterium. Previously published study has reported that the virulence factors are correlated to antibiotic resistance and the presence of high level of virulence factors enhance antibacterial resistance. Among the clinical isolates, the occurrence rate of Pseudomonas aeruginosa was higher at the age group of 31 to 45 in both male and female. In contrast, the lowest occurrence was observed at the age group of above 60 years. In this study, quinolone was showed the highest resistance, which is similar to our other study, followed by cephalosporin groups of antibiotics, which are agreeing to another recent study by Santamarai. 49 isolates were positive for multi resistance, while another recent study has shown that 95% strains are multi resistance. It was revealed in some studies that variance factors and multi resistance are significantly associated. In our studies, hormones are aerogenesis from different types of clinical samples produce various types of valence factors and as we know, valence factor is associated with multi resistance. So our best being one of the reason for multi resistance for pseudomonas aerogenesis. Okay, we have observed that the highest 48% activity for hemolysis, 43% were positive for DNAs, 40% positivity for phospholipase and 31% positivity for gelatinase. In contrast, the lowest 17% positivity for biofilm production was observed. In our study, the observed virulence factors and pseudomonas aeruginosa is lower compared to another similar study reported where the positivity for hemolysis was 95.2%, hospitalized was 81%, and gelatinase was 78%. Interestingly, some researcher known as Pramodini and her colleagues found hemolysin, phospholipase and gelatinous isolates producer. Among the valence factors, phospholipase was detected in 87.5% of isolates, 68.5% isolates were biofilm producer and 81.25% strains were detected as gelatinous positive, which were much higher compared to our study. The lowest percentage of hemolysin activity was recorded in the blood where DNA is uh, in respiratory. Among all the different sources of clinical samples, urine produced the lowest phospholipase and gelatinase and biofilm respectively. The highest occurrence was observed for hemolysin from stool followed by 60% for phospholipase, gelatinase, DNA in blood, respiratory and urine respectively. Okay. Among the 120 isolates of pseudomonas aeruginosa, the highest 19.16%, 16% strains were ESB positive, MBL was 7.5% and 10.83% were MC producer. In a recent study, 25.13% isolates were ESBL positive, which is slightly higher compared to our study, <coughs> where we got 19%, and 18.37% isolates were MBL producer in pseudomonas aeruginosa, which are in agreement with our study. Okay. Okay. Figure at all reported 38% isolates were MC positive, while it was 10% positivity in our study. The observation of beta lactamase producing pseudomonas aeruginosa was shown in figure 5. We have observed virulence factors and beta lactamase producers showed a significant association based on Pearson correlation coefficient analysis. According to our result, 
A strong correlation between ESG producing isolates and virulence factors was observed. Ambient producing strains acted to be more expressive with hemolysin, gelatinous and biofilm and MC producing isolates are highly correlated with the phospholipid, gelatinous, DNS and biofilm respectively. Standard significance difference was measured by the P value less than 0.05. No significance was observed among ESB producing a strain with gelatinous and, and biofilm factors, ambient producing isolates with phospholipids and DNS respectively and MC strains with hemolysins. You can see in the table 3, effective correlation is present among the secretion of virulence factors and beta lactamase producing pseudomonas aeruginosa. We could be established that antimicrobial sensitivity of pseudomonas aeruginosa depends on the microbial biological correlation among virulence factors and source of isolation. So in conclusion, you can say the study highlights the effect of the correlation between the source of infection and virulence factors must be periodically monitored to understand possible mechanisms. The information and the recommendation of this study will improve to control these infections, development of alternative therapy and therapeutic success in the community. So we'd like to thank our all the co-authors for the support for the support to complete the study and there was no conflict of interest. Anyway, these are the references we used. So with this we'd like to thank you for listening to my presentation. Okay, thank you, have a good day.